Rising Sages, Fire Nation TV. Please subscribe, like, share, and comment. The battle for souls at the end, there should be weeping, wailing, and gnashing of teeth. All hail the Lord Jesus Christ and pray for peace in Israel. Rise and sage against the world. Hey, what's up, y'all? Fire Nation chapter 87. And this is on the five-fold ministry. Um, the fivefold ministry is the five offices that operate the church where you get your preaching from, you know, and we're going to go dive deep into it, but uh, every church local body um, should have the fivefold ministry if you allow the Holy Spirit to speak through the ministers and teach in that church. Now, some people, some churches don't allow that. They just have like a person like the Pope or something. Uh, that's the only one, but we're going to talk about those five offices of the fivefold ministry that should be in every church. Now we know the Bible says that women can't preach. So we're going to start with that. Um, but I just want to thank all y'all for liking, subscribing, and just sharing any questions that you have on, uh, church related questions, um, Bible related questions, just ask them. I'll try to get back to you and answer. Uh, my schedule been kind of hectic. I've been teaching Sunday school at my church uh, this week. So uh, I'm definitely learning a lot doing that. And um, hopefully one day I'll be teaching in front of uh, the church. <laughs> you know, so <sighs> it, we're definitely in a spiritual battle. We're in the last days. Um, and we've seen the. Um, the aliens, uh, they said the aliens landed in Miami at the Miami Mall. And they said the aliens were in Texas uh, sightings. And there's more sightings of aliens. But if you look back at my uh, video on Project Blue Beam, my video on Project Blue Beam, I'll tell you how the uh, government is trying to trick the people into believing that to fake an invasion and take control and um, bring in the one world government through, okay, we got to all bind together because, you know, we're being, we're being attacked by aliens. Our aliens are coming against us. I don't believe that. Now, if you really see uh, something that look like an alien, uh, those are demons, you know, and uh, those will usually manifest around the time you're sleeping when your body drifts in and out of your body to maybe your soul goes to different realms. I mean, drifts in and out of your body, go to different realms and stuff. You know, maybe you see those things, but don't believe it. Don't believe it. <laughs> this is a time of deception. These are last days. The enemy knows his time is about up. He's trying to deceive. So um, definitely will get the truth from me. And um, I hope some other ministers step up and uh, start speaking what the word says, the Bible, and, and what the Holy Spirit tells them instead of being on prosperity and uh, falsehoods uh, that we should not be. All right, so let's get it, let us get started because it's pretty long. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> God set some in the church, first apostles, then prophets, teachers, evangelists, and pastors all for the protect perfecting of the church. God does it himself. It's nothing in the world but just yielding yourself to the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will take over from there and you don't know what you're doing. It's the Holy Spirit's sovereign work. The bride of Christ, and uh, speaking from my own um, experience, uh, when I've uh, preached uh, the Sunday school in front of uh, some of the church members, um, 
it's definitely the Holy Spirit helping me uh, and just the Holy Spirit would knock that nervousness away because I'm a nervous, shy person. And um, Holy Spirit, when when that Holy Spirit takes you over, it'll knock that whole that um, it'll knock that nervousness spirit away. And uh, it'll just give you what to say. And, um, you know, but it takes time to learn how to uh, listen to the Holy Spirit and humble yourself to bring forth that message that the Holy Spirit wants to bring forth because it's out it's out of your outline message sometimes so uh, you have to learn how to uh, balance and listen and let the holy spirit speak through you and uh, it takes time and it definitely takes uh, experience and i'm just grateful that my church allows me to even teach the sunday school sometimes so i can uh, gets experience uh, for this battle that we're in because uh, I know God told me that one time I was sitting in church and uh, I just kept hearing the word preach preach you know God told me to preach but I didn't do it at that time uh, I even fell away from the church but I just thank God that he um, had patience with me and long suffering enough to keep me thank you Jesus and um all right <clears throat> it's the holy spirit's sovereign work the bride of christ will have a ministry before the rapture it's the message of the hour the bride of christ consists and that's what's going on now that's what i'm doing <laughs> this is the message before uh the rapture we had a major prophet his name was William Brannan, um, and it's a blessing to have heard uh, his sermons and to uh, know that message that came from God through that prophet, because he died in 1960, but uh, his message is still on YouTube. Look up William Brannan and uh, get some real Bible teaching, you know, way better than me, way straight from God. You can tell he's a prophet. You know, you can tell that that's the Holy Spirit moving through that man, you know, <laughs> way better than me, like 10, like 100 times better than me. But, you know, I'm just out here trying. <laughs> All right. It's the Holy Spirit's sovereign work. All right. The bride of Christ will have a ministry before the rapture. It's the message of the hour. At even time message. At light in the evening time. The bride of Christ consists of apostles, prophets, teachers, evangelists, and pastors. God never intended the church to be run by men. God runs his church through gifts of the spirit. The gifts of the spirit is in the church to correct the spirit. The five ministerial offices in his church is first apostles first uh, <clears throat> first is apostles or missionaries missionary or apostle is the highest calling there is the word missionary means sent one and apostle means one sent Apostles, prophets, teachers, evangelists, pastors, that's the elected offices of the ch of church, uh, of God to his church. Five offices. All right. Then in each local church, there's nine spiritual gifts that come among the people. That is knowledge, wisdom, gifts of healing, working of miracles. Uh, speaking with tongues, interpretation of tongues, and all these go in the local body, and every person in the church has an individual ministry. Sometimes your ministry can just be um, the way you live your life. Some people don't never go to church or read the word of God, 
but they see the way you live your life and you represent Jesus Christ without being ashamed and walk in power and glory. All right. And that individual ministry goes together with the rest of the ministry to edify the body of Jesus Christ. God was predestinating by foreknowledge and set in church these orders. <clears throat> they are of God. God speaks the vindicated and God speaks the vindicates and proves himself by preachers preaching the word by the prophets. And I just want to say, yeah, God, if you're meant to, uh, God calls you to preach or teach or something, um, God will vindicate you. I remember um, I was led, but you got to have a mind like Christ. You got to uh, sacrifice and surrender and submit to God uh, so that he can uh, lead you and vindicate you. I remember one time um, there was a brother at my church a long time ago, years ago, maybe shoot, I don't want to tell my age, but maybe 20 years ago or something, if that long, I don't know. But um, it was a brother, uh, he had to have a surgery on his foot and um, <clears throat> to put his, uh, put his bone back together or something, or to, it's a metal that, that he had from a prior surgery that was out of place. And he, the doctor said he got to had to have surgery. So God just led me in my mind to go pray for that brother. So I obeyed what God told me to do, what he led, led my heart to do it on my mind. I went and laid hands and prayed over that brother's foot. And I actually, while I was praying over that brother's foot, laying hands on his foot, I felt that metal moving. And it actually went back in place. And he, he went to the doctor and the doctor took x-rays and said, you know, he didn't know basically how you know, that metal went back in place and stuff, but um, it did. And, you know, um, it, it's, it's basically, from what I understand, it's his faith that done it. He had enough faith to believe God for that healing, you know, but I was just led to uh, agree with that. So I laid hands and, um, and that's what happened. It's not me that's a healer. But by his faith, he was healed. And that is the power of God. God is the only healer. Man is not a healer, but God is. Remember that. Don't think uh, man be a healer. <laughs> no, it's, it's by your faith you healed. You know, so uh, he had enough faith to be healed. But God led, did lead me to do that. You know, so uh, God will vindicate you uh, if he calls you to the to the office, to an office. All right. <clears throat> <clears throat> all right they are of god god speaks uh then vindicates and proves himself by preachers preaching the word by the prophets prophesying by the by the seer and so forth that's in the church that god has placed by the evangelists pastors all together to feed and take care of his sheep Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, five spiritual gifts that pre, that's predestinated by foreknowledge God set in the church. Gifts and callings are without repentance. You know, that's how come you can see some people that don't live right, don't do right, don't live God's word. And they still out here doing uh, they're still out here with gifts and callings. You see, just like these uh, music artists, you know, they're supposed to be singing a, in a gospel, uh, supposed to be singing gospel somewhere, giving praise to the Lord and honor. And some of them out here doing rock and roll, singing R&B and, and, and stuff. And, you know, they got a gift. But gifts and callings come without repentance. Some people out here speaking in tongues and they, they basically about worship the devil. They, they worship evil and um, gifts and callings come without repentance. Rains falls on the just and the unjust, the just and the unjust. That's what that reminds me of when it comes to gifts and callings. So your gifts and callings cannot make you saved, but it's following this Bible, living by this Bible 
and receiving the Holy Ghost from the Lord and sacrificing, submitting and surrendering to the God Almighty, having justification by faith, having um, just surrendering, <laughs> sanctification, and then baptized, filled with the Holy Spirit. All right. <clears throat> Gifts and callings are without repentance, set in the church to keep the church in line with the word. Apostles, prophets, teachers, pastors, evangelists, offices of the church. God sent not man called, but God sent inspired men to keep the church lined up. And I tell you, you know, inspired men, we go out inspired, filled with the Holy Ghost, inspired by God to go out and, and speak the word of God. And I tell you, I received more hate speaking the word of God and speaking the truth and I've ever received out there when I was even a sinner and sin doing the wrong things, you know, and that's sad. And that church comes from the hate people, uh, church people. A lot of times that, that hate comes from the church people, but not the true church people. Because in the church, you got three types of believers. The believers, they're not going to hate. They feel with the Holy Spirit really there for God, just there for God. But you got the make believers and the non-believers, which are in the church too. And the devil sends people to the church to disrupt the ministry. So we definitely got to just know that um, this is not an easy walk. It's definitely a narrow road, but this is the only way. Jesus is the only way for you to have eternal life. Any other way you die off to death, you know, just pray for them, brothers and sisters. Maybe they'll come around later on. I'm not saying they're lost cause, the make believers and non believers in the church, but just pray for them, love them anyhow, and show them how a Christian is supposed to walk and talk. Be uh, honest to the word and honest in your Christian lifestyle and walk. All right. Gifts of the Spirit, not fanatics, <clears throat> fanaticism but truly gifts of the spirit in the church. He presents his army in the form of five offices. First apostles, prophets, teachers, pastors, evangelists. That's his soldiers that he's commanding, his commanding officers, all with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, waiting to meet the enemy with the word of God. Yes, we're waiting to meet the enemy with the word of God. We have our sword. Our sword for the word is like a sword. Um, <clears throat> all right. Each one backing another up with the chief captain in them, vindicating his resurrection by the proof of his works. His corporal body sets at <clears throat> the right hand of God. But the Holy Spirit is working through his sanctified vessel. Mm. First apostles, then prophets, then teachers, then evangelists, then pastors for protecting, perfecting of the church. It's not the preacher that preaches, it's God preaching through him. Hallelujah. It's not the prophet that sees the vision, it's God speaking through him. Those offices house God's presence, God's spirit working through man, if that office denies any of the word, it's not God. And that's so dangerous when people can say, you know, they can say, well, you know, women can preach. And then I can show them the scripture where several times where women are not supposed to preach in the Bible. And they say women can preach. Or when I say when I show them a scripture where homosexuals are not supposed to you're not supposed to be homosexual, but a man for a woman and a woman for a man. And then they can say they don't believe it. It's, and then we say be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And they want to be baptized in the name of Father, Son, Holy Ghost. You know, these things. We got to get back to the word of God. If you deny the word, you, you deny God because God is his word. That's Genesis, first Genesis. So definitely, if you don't even understand the word, that's fine. You just have to believe the word, live the word, 
You might not misunderstand. You might not understand it all. I don't understand it all. I'm still trying to learn. I learn every day. I learn, <laughs> you know. And I've been in this a long time. Every day I'm learning something new. So, <clears throat> all right, <clears throat> all right. But uh, if if that office denies any of the word, it's not God. That's the wolf in sheep's clothing. If you're a preacher, you're called to the pulpit to preach. Everybody can't be a preacher. That's right. But live the people a sermon, and it's the voice of God that will bring reproach to them who reject it. Preachers must preach and live their sermons, too. If they can't live it, they need to step down. Yes, the preacher's out here doing the wrong thing. If you can't live your sermon, step down. Step down. <clears throat> Preaching and not called to, if you're not called by God to preach, you'll ruin them. Listening and yourself too, getting the people all mixed up. When you're not called by God, you, you, you go preach, you get the people all mixed up. Every man needs to have a church home. You need to have a place not just to float about from pillar to post, but have somewhere that you go to church and you call it your church because God speaks through like these five uh, offices. God will also speak through, you know, your, the nine, uh, the spiritual gifts, nine spiritual gifts and the five offices of the, the pastor, evangelist, uh, preacher, uh, teacher and apostle. God speaks through those five uh, offices. So you need to definitely have a church that you go through, go to, and not just be looking at, uh, I, I appreciate y'all looking at me online, but you need to also have a church that you go to, you know, definitely. You gotta, you gotta be there. You gotta be a part of the service. We called in this last days to gather ourselves together and you gotta pay your 10% tithes. How you not paying that United Church? How you not paying your tithes? <laughs> and I gotta pay my tithes too all the time. You know, sometimes you hit hard times, but we gotta we gotta do better, you know? Uh, all right. <clears throat> all right. You gotta have somewhere that you go to church and you call it your church. Somewhere you pay tithes and somewhere you help support the cause. The full and complete authority of the church is the pastor. There's no one above the elder. So definitely listen to your pastor unless he goes against the word of God. You know how to eat the meat and throw out the bone. So hopefully you in a church where the pastor sticks to the word of God and lets the Holy Spirit lead him so he can lead the church. Because the head of the church, the head of the man is Christ. And that should be and not only a pastor, but all of us. And the head of the woman is man. How can you lead your woman or how can you lead your wife right or your daughter and uh, you are not led by Christ? You cannot. All right. <clears throat> the, the church is sovereign. The pastor is just one vote. It's the church. It's democracy of the church the holy ghost is the church does the speaking the holy ghost in the church does the speaking no bishops hierarchies or overseers it should be the holy ghost that does the speaking the church in a vote tells you what to do <clears throat> ephesians chapter 4 verse 11 through 13 and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the protecting of for the, for the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of Christ till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the son of god unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Qualifications of a true minister are they're called and elected for ordained by God, not by men. Second Peter 
chapter 1, verse 10. Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure, for if ye do these things, ye shall never fail. Sent by God, not some man-made organizations. All right? Because, you know, um, it takes God to put someone in an office, not the seminary schools, not the teachings, not the scholars, but is it, it, you know, it doesn't matter if you got a PhD or any other degree, God places his preachers. He places the fivefold ministry. And anytime God doesn't place that man, that's where the people get all mixed up. You know, because um, the man goes from his thinking and it's supposed to be ahead of Christ uh, God in that it's supposed to be a inspired man it's supposed to be a Holy Ghost filled man so they know what the people has need of through discernment through the Holy Spirit right yeah hmm. all right uh, sent by God not some man-made organizations Romans chapter 10, verse 14 through 15. And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? Chosen of God, not handpicked by men. Matthew chapter 22, verse 14. For many are called, but few are chosen gifted and vindicated of God, not by not just running with some seminary <clears throat> experience or with some Bible school theology, but by the demonstration of the power of the Holy Ghost. Romans chapter 11, verse 29, for the gift and calling of God are without repentance. Definitely, we hear God calling, answer. Matthew chapter 10, verse 7 through 8. And as ye go preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils freely. Ye have received, freely give. All right. Walking in the present truth, not denominational hybrid teachings. Psalms 86, chapter, verse 11. Teach me the way, O Lord. I will walk in thy truth. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 12. Wherefore, I will not be ne neg negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though ye know them, and be established in the present truth. A humble servant, not one that's being served. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 20, verse 25 through 28. But Jesus called them and said, Ye know that the princess, princess of the Gentiles exercise dominion over them, and they that are great exercise authority upon them, but it shall not be so among you. But whosoever will be great among you, let him be your minister. And whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant. Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. Mm -hmm. That's right. No compromiser. You can't be a compromiser. You can't preach what the people want. You got to preach what the word says and what God wants. Hallelujah. You can't be a compromiser of the word. Galatians chapter one, verse eight. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. And a curse means uh, damned. Go to hell. That's, that's what cursed. Romans chapter 3, verse 4. Yea, let God be true, but every man be a liar. But every man a liar. 
the prophet is a man of whom the word of the Lord comes to because the prophet is so designed life that his subconscious and his first conscience is so close together that he doesn't go to sleep to dream his dream. He sees it when he's wide awake. That's something God has to do. Yes, I've experienced that um, where, you know, um, I've seen visions while I'm wide awake. I've seen visions from the Lord when I first got saved, a lot of different visions. And uh, and I've had dreams. Um, but I'm still, you know, it's like, am I a prophet? I'm going to tell you at the end of the video what I think I might be between the five offices of the apostle, prophet, teacher, preacher, and past, pastor, and uh, evangelist. I'll tell you at the end of the video what I think I might be. I will. A prophet foresees way off the things that is coming. He sees the cup of God's wrath full before it's filled. He can say, thus saith the Lord. Prophets are forenamed. They're prophets. And uh, there's a gift of prophecy in the church that could be on one, then the next one, the next one, and so forth of prophecy. Paul said, you may all prophesy one by one, but there's a difference between a prophet and a prophecy. A prophecy has to be judged by three witnesses, two or three before it can be given or accepted in the church, according to the scriptures. But a prophet, like the Old Testament prophet, they had the word of the Lord. The translation was right to them. Hallelujah. Yeah, that's true. Uh, they got the translation right to them. You know. And any prophecy that's uh, prophecy or prophet that comes and says he has a word for the Lord from, for the, about the, the future, see if it line up with scripture. And if it don't come to pass, you don't hear that man no more. That's scripture. You don't hear him no more. He's a false prophet, false prophecy. All right. And they were known because the Bible said, if there be one among you, spiritual or a prophet, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him, speak to him in visions and reveal myself in dreams. And if what this man says come to pass, then hear him, for I am with him. If it doesn't, then don't hear him. I'm not with him. Don't fear him. All right. <clears throat> Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 22. When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not, nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord hath not spoken, but the prophet hath spoken it presumptuously, presumptuously, thou shalt not be afraid of him. If Yeah, if a person comes and says that this is to happen, that he received a word from the Lord, it don't happen, then you know he's not a prophet. Don't fear him. Don't listen to him. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 20. But if the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak or that speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. Mm. Hallelujah. Whew. Better, not, better not be speaking that unless you know it's from the God. A true prophet is a seer of visions, has Thus saith the Lord, has a gift of discernment, can prophesy and comes to pass, can interpret dreams, stays silently in the word, takes no glory upon himself. In the church, the pastor is built to where he can put up with the fusses 
of the people. He's a burden bearer. He's the ox of the team. <clears throat> God bless the pastors. God bless them. They put up with a lot when they put up with the people. He's a man that can sit now when somebody's got something against somebody else and sit now with the two families and take neither side and reason it out and bring it right back into sweetness. A pastor knows how to talk, how to take care of things. Hallelujah. But the full and complete authority of the church is the pastor. There's no one above the elder. All right. The word elder signifies who the person is, while the word bishop signifies the office of the same man. Error always has referred to a man's chronological age in the Lord. He is an elder, not because he is elected or ordained, etc., but because he is older. He is more seasoned, trained, not a novice, reliable because of his because of experience and long standing proof of his experience. Qualifications of a pastor are in first Timothy chapter three, verse one through seven. This is a true saying. If a man desires desires the office of a bishop, he desires a good work. Hmm. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant. You see how I said a bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife. You see? And they want to break preachers. Uh, they want to make women's preachers. They want women to preach. But in this scripture, in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 through 7, it says a bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife. So they can't be no women preachers. This is just, I'm just, there's so many things in the Bible that tell you that a woman can't preach. God lets you know plainly, flat out, a woman not supposed to preach. God was called for this role. I mean, uh, men was called for this role to preach the gospel. All right. <clears throat> A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach, not given unto wine, no striker, not greedy or filthy looker, but patient, not a brawler, not covetous, uh, and covetous is wanting something strongly, wanting something what someone else has. That's covetous. Uh, one that ruleth well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? Get your houses in order, folks. Not a novice, less being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without, lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. William Brandon believed in the supreme authority of the local assembly. Yes, let each church be its own, choose its pastors, deacons, or whatever. That way man has no bishop over him in the church. If the Holy Spirit wants to speak something to that church, they don't have to ask anybody whether they could do this or that. It's the individual in contact with the Holy Spirit. The Sovereignty of the local elder is over that local church. The evangelist is a man burning like a the evangelist, or we're talking about the evangelist now. The evangelist is a man burning like a fireball. He runs into a city and preaches his message and gets out. 
of there somewhere else he goes. The teacher sits back, talking about the teacher now, the teacher sits back under the anointing of the spirit and is able to take the words and put them together by the Holy Spirit that the pastor or evangelist, either one, could not compare with him. Bible teaching is tremendous, like walking put on the thin ice. Preaching usually catches the sinner, brings, <clears throat> brings him under condemnation by the word, but teaching places a man positionally what he is. Hmm. And we can never rightly be able to have faith until positionally we know what we are. Yeah, that's the thing I'm I'm working with. I, I'm really pray for me, y'all, because I definitely need to know uh, what I am and what God wants me to be. All right, let me read that again. Um, and we can never rightly be able to have faith until we positionally know what we are. And that's what, uh, and that's from William Brannan, you know, my the, the the preacher that I like most, the prophet William Brannan. All right. <clears throat> Paul told Timothy, study it rightly, dividing the word of God, which is truth. Now you can only divide the, the, the word of God, which is truth. You can only divide it the right way if you have a mind like Christ. You got to have that Holy Spirit, folks. All right. <clears throat> you must not misinterpret the word. You say, well, I believe it means this. It means just what it says. If you don't understand the word, don't misinterpret the word. Just say it as it's written. And don't, don't, you know, that's you in danger when you do anything else. It needs no interpreter. The word needs no interpreter. And you must not misplace the word. And you must not dislocate the word. And if we would either of these, it throws the whole Bible in confusion and chaos. We must not misinterpret or mishandle it, misinterpret or dislocate it. It must be kept just exactly the way God said it was. And the scripture is of no private interpretation. It was wrote by the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the only one who can reveal it. For it is hid from the eyes of the wise and prudent. And you can show them in the scripture where it says no women supposed to preach. Where it says you're supposed to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Where it says... You can't be a homosexual where it says all these different things in the scripture that it says where it was where it says a man. God made man and woman. They want to say uh, have all these other genders out here and stuff. You can show them in the scripture where it says that. But just like the Bible says right here and the Holy Spirit is the only one who can reveal it. For it is hid from the eyes of the wise and prudent and revealed to babes such as will learn. You see, they can't even see it because it's hid from the eyes of the wise and prudent and revealed. Uh, and it's revealed for it is hid from the eyes of the wise and prudent and it's revealed to babes such as will learn. So it's, uh, this word. Even if you show them the, the in the Bible where it says these things, it's hid from the eyes of the wise and prudent. You know, wow. If you don't know, if you don't use your mind of the Holy Spirit to put together, you have your scene mixed up. If you don't use have a mind like Christ to put the word together, you have having things messed up. But if you're reading between the lines and try to make it say something that in between the lines says something different, what the line what the line says, then it's wrong. Don't never try to make the Bible say something different than what it it says just reading it. Some say I don't need to go to church anymore. 
And a lot of people say that after the pandemic, they say they're just going to watch uh, pastors and preachers on YouTube. No. But the Holy Ghost has come. He's a teacher. God wants you to be there in the church. You got to be in the body of Christ because God want to use you. You know, you might have spiritual gifts. It's nine spiritual gifts. It's five offices in the church. You know, you, 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 you need to be there. You need to be there for the edifying of the church body, you know. <clears throat> and some people say, I don't need to go to church anymore. But the Holy Ghost has come. He's a teacher. He's a teacher. The Holy Spirit sits, teaches in the church so he could teach. The Holy Spirit sits teachers in the church so he could teach. He teaches through the prophet, evangelist, pastor, uh, teachers, apostles. Holy Spirit teaches through them. All right. The apostle is set, is a set in order. He's a man that is sent from God to set things in order. And that's the apostle. Apostle means one that's sent. A missionary is an apostle. The word missionary means one sent. Duties and responsibilities. All right. Duties and responsibilities of a true. And that's that's uh, where we, we talked about the preacher. We talked about the teacher. We talked about the prophet. We talked about the apostle. And um, we talked about the um, prophet, teacher, pastor, apostle, and a teacher. Yep. So uh, that's the five. And uh, I told you I was going to tell you what I think I am. Now, I think I'm a minor prophet because it was one, it's seven major prophets. William Brandon was a major prophet, but I think I'm just a minor prophet. Uh, if not a prophet, I'm I'm an apostle. Um, but I believe that I'm definitely a, a minor prophet or an apostle. Uh, seeing as though I've uh, had the gifts of a seer and different um, things, so different prophecies and stuff. So that's that's what I am. But we should all know, you know. If you've been called to preach, you should know which which of the five offices you're in. Are you a pastor? Are you a teacher? Are you a preacher? Are you an apostle? Are you um evangelist? It's hard to tell sometimes, you know. I've, I've been through a lot, but I believe I'm definitely an apostle or um, a minor, minor prophet or apostle. All right. And apostle is a missionary, too, so. All right, the word missionary means one sent. Duties and responsibilities of a true minister are he must edify and unify the body of Christ for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body, Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. <laughs> he must not bring division to contentions to the body of Christ. First Corinthians chapter one, verse 10 through 13. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing and that there be no divisions among you that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. He must be able to demonstrate the power of the Holy Ghost. First Corinthians chapter two, verse four through five. And my, and my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but and demonstration of the spirit and of power that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of man, but in the power, in the power of God. 
his preaching must be inspired by the Holy Ghost. It must come from the heart and not from an intellectual point of view. He must live with his preach. He must live what he preaches and the reality of God in his life must be supported by true life experiences. He must be vindicated by the scriptures. Chapter uh, John, chapter 14, verse 12 through 14. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he also and greater works than these shall he do. Because I go unto my Father, and whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Luke chapter 9, verse 1 through 2. Then he called his twelve disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils, and to cure diseases. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Mark chapter 16, verse 17 through 18. And the signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take no serpents. And if they drink only any deadly thing, it <clears throat> shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. St. John chapter 14, verse 7. The works that I do shall he do greater. The right translation is more, not greater. The right translation is more, not greater. Yes, uh, with that greater uh, with the works that we should do greater in quantity, but not quality. He raised the dead, stopped nature, so forth more because the Holy Spirit would be working through the church throughout the universe. Hmm. Hallelujah. More of the same works will you do because I go to the father and I'll come again and be with you. He must be able to lead the church of God into perfection. He must lead the church unto perfect love. Matthew chapter 5, verse 43 through 47. Ye have heard that if it had been said, thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you, that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and the on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. For if ye love them which love you, what reward have ye? Hallelujah, that's true. Do not even the publishings the same publishings. I believe that's those are tax collectors. And you know, they they after it. <laughs> they after that taxes. I tell you, they didn't like them back in that day. He must uh, bring conviction to the sinners. Second Timothy chapter four verse two through four. Preach the word. <clears throat> Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts, they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And we're at in those times where they don't want to hear, people don't want to hear sound doctrine. So they go get these prosperity, big mega church prosperity ministers that's only preaching about money and material goods instead of preaching the word of God. 
the preach word, word of God tell you how to get right, how to get salvation, how to rise up and, and please God, how to get the Holy Spirit, how to get in line and get in order, give God praise and make God happy. But these prosperity preachers, mega church preachers, they preaching on making money, material goods, things that will wind you up dead. Well, we looking for eternal life. And, and we got to get back to the word of God, to the Bible, to the scriptures, get to get that eternal life. Hallelujah. All right. <clears throat> All right. Um, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Because they want them preachers. Pre uh, they have itching ears. That, that means uh, that they want to hear what they want to hear. They don't want to hear what the word says, but the preachers are preaching for those people. The preachers are preaching what the people want to hear instead of what the, what the Bible says, what the word says. And these, in these last days, in these days, um, they'll have, they'll have itching ears. And that's sad because it's coming a day where we're at now, where they won't endure down sound doctrine. But after, uh, their own lusts, they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. The teachers, they want the teachers that'll preach what they want to hear, not what the Bible say. Mm. All right. He must be, and we're talking about preachers these days. He must be able to set the captives free. Luke chapter four, verse 18 through 19. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering sight, recovering of sight to the blind, to set liberty to, to them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. He must bring honor and glory to Jesus Christ alone, not to any man, group, system, or denomination. Bring honor to Jesus Christ. Not any person, not any denomination, not any system, but bring the glory and honor and give him your praise and obedience to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Galatians chapter six, verse 14. But God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me and un I unto the world. First Thessalonians chapter two, verse six, nor of men sought we glory, neither of you nor yet of others when we might be burdensome as the apostles of Christ. He must witness that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. Hebrews chapter 13, verse eight. That's what that was. A true minister should attest to the truth of the first pool, healing and miracles, the second pool, discernment and prophecy, and the third pool, revealing of the word. He must preach only the word of God, the real food for the soul, not man-made ideals. Matthew chapter four, verse four, but he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Revelation chapter 22, verse 18 through 11 through 19. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in the book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. His preaching must focus on the present truth, the message of the hour. Second Peter chapter one, verse 12. Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though ye know them and be established in the present truth. He must lead. Yeah, you know, you got some ministers. I've noticed that, that they only preach uh, maybe from the Old Testament. 
you know, and I'll be like, what about the present truth? What about what's going on now? You know, we need help now. We need answers now, you know, and they, they, and a lot of these ministers are preaching from their own mind instead of preaching from the mind of Christ, which is when you get the Holy Ghost, you'll have the mind of Christ. You know, you're not even supposed to really, William Brennan, um, he said, you know, you're not even supposed to preach until you get the Holy Ghost. Because look, and take it even further than that, where he got that from was Pentecost. You know, um, they had to wait in the upper room until the Holy Ghost fell before they could go out and preach. You know, and when I say preach, the women couldn't preach, but they could live the life of Christ. They were they, they have the nine spiritual gifts. But they not supposed to women not supposed to preach or teach. That's just what that's what it is. You know, God got us for certain roles, men and women, you know. All right. <clears throat> he must lead the people to become overcomers. <clears throat> Romans chapter 12, verse 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse five, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. He must prepare the people for the rapture. Matthew chapter 6, verse 19 through 21. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and whether where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. We realize the scriptural way of ordaining a minister is laying on hands. Now we do not believe that gifts come by laying on of hands. We believe that laying on of hands is a sanction to what we've already seen hallelujah when they laid on laid hands upon timothy and upon those brethren they had noticed in them men was the gift they seen this in timothy therefore the elders laid hands upon him ordaining him not put hands upon a man that nothing has ever been showed forth and they asked the blessings and we all believe that we believe God such things for the people. All right. A solemn warning against false ministers discerning and identifying the bogus five fold ministry. These are some people that's preaching without the Holy Spirit. They're not supposed to be preaching. God ain't never tell them to go run or to preach. Now, I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learnt, and avoid them. Acts 20, chapter 20, verse 29 through 30. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, sparing not sparing the flock. Not sparing, excuse me. <laughs> All right, let me read that again. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not, not, not sparing the flock. Okay. Also of your own selves shall men arise speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. Nicolaian comes from two Greek words, Nicol which means to conquer, and laos, which means the laity. Nicolanian means to conquer the laity. 
God has never placed his church in the hands of an elected leadership, which moves with political mindness. The Pope, the, the, the Catholic Church, these denominations, even some of them, even them. He has placed his church in the care of God ordained, spirit filled, word living men who lead the people through feeding them the word. And you can barely find any today. Even the ones that you think you just don't know about, like my man Gino Jennings. You know, he sticks with the word, but, you know, some of the stuff he does, you're not supposed to debate. You know, I don't know if he truly has the Holy Spirit, but, you know, he does stick with the word. But, you know, we're looking for someone with the Holy Spirit to teach the people. And um, you don't hardly see too many leaders, you know, standing up. But you'll see some, some, some just won't be in the public eye. That's true. That's true. So keep praying for our brothers and sisters in Christ and the leadership in all the, in the churches all over the world. Just keep praying for all our Christians, brothers and sisters, especially the leadership. They go through a hard time being battled and Trust me, I know. I'm not even in leadership. I'm just trying to help out the best I can, you know? All right. <clears throat> Nicolaitanism destroys those precepts and instead separates the ministers from the people and makes the leaders overlords instead of servants. The Nicolaitan doctrine was the corruption of the clergy as they sought political power amongst themselves, while Bal Balanism is the subjection of the people to their <clears throat> system of creed and worship in order to hold them. The doctrine of the Roman Catholic Church did not give the people true food, the word, they were given the food that came from idol worship, Balanism, Balan, Balonian, Babylonian, sorry, uh, Balonian paganism wrapped up in Christian terminology. And that very same spirit and doctrine is right amongst all Protestants and is called denomination. Hmm. Nicolaitanism is organiz organization humanizing the leadership of the church and thereby deposing the spirit, Depozo deposing the spirit. You see, and what that is, what they're saying is uh, they don't let the Holy Spirit teach through the people or put me in this uh it has the spirit, the spiritual gift of preaching, or has the spiritual gift of the Holy Ghost. They don't let them uh, preach the word. Uh, those that stick with the word and have that gift of the Holy Spirit, but they want to teach from man's thoughts. They want to teach from man's false creeds and dogmas that they come up with instead of preaching the Bible and the true word of God. And it's wrong not to let the Holy Spirit speak. The Holy Spirit there to teach. Some of these denominational systems, especially the Catholic Church, have gotten so far from God and the truth. That is a shame. Balanism is denominationalism. Just like um, when you see the Pope now blessing same-sex marriages. When the Bible says it's abomination. Homosexuality is abomination. But you see the Pope blessing homosexual marriage. You see, that's that's what we're talking about. Balanism is denominationalism, which takes the church manual instead of the Bible. Let me read that again. Balanism is denominationalism, which takes the church manual instead of the Bible. See, they're doing their own thing. And right this hour, many of God's people are caught in the snare of denomination and God is crying to them come out of her my people lest ye be partakers of her sins and that ye receive not her plagues you see they are ignorant 
But if the rapture should take place at this moment, at this moment, ignorance would be no count of appeal from the judgment of God for being in the wrong ranks. It's not it's nothing but reasoning taking place over the word. Because you have supposed to have a mind like Christ, you're supposed to have the Holy Spirit to teach, to preach. And, and you going by man's reasoning, you can't you can't help people like that, that way, you know. It's nothing but reasoning taking place over God's word. And any person who is in the organized denominations is right in the midst of of an antichrist system, William Brandon is not against the people, but the system. Notice how some false prophets are like Judas out for money. Mm. They get you to sell all you have and give it to them and their schemes. They spend more time on offerings than the word. Those who attempt to operate gifts will make use of a gift which has a margin of error in it and then ask for money and neglect the word and call it of God. Talking about these prosperity preachers. They ain't doing right. And people will go to them and bear with them and support them and believe them not knowing it is the way of death. They don't tell you how to get saved. These prosperity preachers they just tell you how to they, they tell you you know uh, about money about making money money making schemes going on and materialism and you know they're not spreading the true gospel how to get the holy ghost how to have eternal life how to uh, be good love your enemies and different things you know they just not, they're not it's, it's just it's it's sad times you know my heart hurts you know, and it's really sad to see how far we've come away from what God would have us to do, away from what who God would have us to be. It really deeply saddens me. People see the word of God and they don't want it. God has been good, you know. He died on a cross for us, but people don't want him. They rather make up their own thing, and, and you know he shed his precious blood for us. You know, it's just sad, sad that you know when in his last days, and the one we need, Jesus Christ, people don't want him. The Bible say one of the saddest things. The Bible says he on the outside of the church knocking to get in. Knocking to get in. <sighs> but um, I just want to thank all y'all for liking, subscribing, and uh, and uh, just pray for everybody, y'all. Pray for everybody, you know. Let us pray for everybody, you know, and have love for everybody. Let's try to live what the Bible says as best we can and repent and uh, just be better, you know. Die, we got to die daily, die to the things of the world. And, um, you know, and figure out what you are if you are a preacher. You know, it's hard. I know I'm not, I, I, I believe that I'm not a I'm not a teacher. <laughs> I'm not a pastor. I'm not an evangelist. But I believe that I'm really a, a minor prophet or either apostle. You know, and that's not to brag or anything like that. But dang, I need we need to find out what we are, folks. When we out here preaching God's word, you know, and don't know really, it's it's just you know, I mean, it's something I need to buckle down and fast and pray on, you know, and stop being lazy. You know, I got to correct myself sometimes. I, I be lazy. So um, just pray for me and I pray for you all and pray for Israel to stop that fighting. And I pray for them, Hamas, to release the, 
the kidnap people of uh, Israel and this world, y'all, is just going on. Uh, America, I know America um, attacked uh, Syria and um, Iraq, and Iran is mad about that because uh, we had those three dead soldiers over there when they sent that um, drone uh, with a bomb on it that hurt some American soldiers and injured three while they were sleeping. And um, the war is still going on with Ukraine and um, Russia. And uh, it looks like we're winding up for World War Three. It looks like that uh, Elon Musk is putting those uh, implants in people's brains which is, um, he just started the trials for that. And that might be the mark of the beast, really. But we know the mark of the beast, ultimately the mark of the beast is unbelief. So just get right with God. And uh, don't accept no, this technology is so evil. And then we got to watch out for AI. So we really, in, and then they say aliens walking around. I don't believe that. Project Blue Beam, check out my video, but so much going on in the world you know just stay right with god stay right with the bible you might not understand it all but believe it all keep praying keep fasting keep seeking the lord you know seek the lord and all things shall be given unto you knocking the door shall be open seeking you shall find action you shall receive you know Run to Christ. He the only salvation. Rapture will soon take place. We got to run to God now before it's too late, folks. God bless you all and have a blessed one. All things are possible with Jesus Christ, even walking on water.